Hey everyone, welcome back. This is going to be video two of the Rust Intermediate tutorial. And today I'm gonna to show you guys a super cool feature of Rust where you could do operating system commands, like basically command line stuff from within your Rust app. So this stuff is dope. Check this out. We're gonna use main here. I've already generated a project for the next few videos to put some of these Rust files in. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna first use STD process command and I'll set up a little example here now this is how it works we're gonna say let echo CMD equal if and now this is a pretty cool feature here we're gonna say if config this config macro target OS equals Windows, and you can obviously probably figure out what that's doing. It's saying, okay, if we're on Windows, if Rust detects that we're on Windows, then this variable is gonna be equal to this command struct that we just said we're gonna use. And it's gonna have CMD, and we're gonna pass in these args. Now this is specific to Windows, obviously. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna say echo A there from Windows. And we'll do output and we're going to handle that exception with an expect and just say failed to execute command now i like this stuff to be kind of neat so i'm going to drop these down to a new line here and then i'm going to just copy this and we're going to say else so if we're not on windows then we're going to use sh and this is actually going to be dash C. And we're going to say ahoy there from Linux. And don't forget your semicolon there. Now I'm going to just do like a print line here just to create some space because I'm super weird about the output stuff. But now we're going to say let the command output equal echo command dot std out and then we're going to print that so we're going to print line and we're going to say command output now this is going to be a vector it's going to be a vector of u8s now what is all that well this is going to be bytes so when this stuff is run when these commands are run Russ is going to get a byte response from the operating system. So it looks like a vector of numbers, but in order to convert that vector of numbers into like a human readable output, you actually want to go and do something along the lines of this. So string from UTF eight, and that will give it a human readable output. And then we don't need this like beautify filter here. Oh, and by the way, you just have to add expect because this is going to be a result. All right, nice. Now let's just call this function down here. And let's run it on Windows first in VS Code and see what we get. Hey there from Windows. Nice. Now if I run it from my WSL terminal, if I do cargo run, you can see instead, since we're on Linux, we get a hoy there from Linux. So how cool is that? You can obviously see that you can build on this. You know, we're just doing echo, but you could do all kinds of commands, any kind of like binaries or executable things that you have on your operating system, you can do with Rust. So let's kind of flex our muscles on that here. Let's build another example. And I'll show you how you can you make this kind of like dynamic. Like you can use the same object, the same command struct to do more than one thing and like sort of you reuse the same object to, to just keep conducting business on your OS. So I'm going to add some of these guys because again, I'm weird. And we're going to say let mutable command root equal command new. And I'm going to keep this one just on Linux. Like I'm just going to run this from WSL. So I'm not going to worry about the whole like configuration thing here. Um, 
now that we have this object created, we can actually use this ls command again and again. And this is how you do that. You just type command root dot status dot expect. And for our expect message, we'll just say failed to execute list command. And then to do it again, you can probably figure out what we're going to do is copy paste here, but let's make it a little different. So right now when we run LS, this Rust program is going to run inside the cargo folder, inside the crate. So in this case, it'll be this intermediate concepts crate. But what if we wanted LS like a different directory? I mean, you could always do like this, but that's not going to make it dynamic. So what you can do is for the second time you call it, you can actually add this additional sort of argument here. And you can say current deer, probably laughing at how I say deer, and let's just make it source. So now we're going to do an ls command to print what's in the current directory, and then we'll slide into source and we'll do ls again. And I'm going to just add this thing for the sake of good formatting, comment this out. And again, like I said, I'm going to use WSL. And there you go. You can see that when we are in the current directory, we can get all the files that are in there. And then we entered source and we just have main RS in there. So that's how you can kind of like dynamically use this object here. Now, this is a pretty simple example. But this is very, very powerful, and this is used a lot in practice because Rust is very, very close to the operating system. You know, people like to write Rust for systems programming. So doing stuff like this is very interesting and very useful, and you can immediately see that if you had, like, binaries or, like, you wanted to launch an application or what have you, you can pass arguments into it. Like, we don't just have to run echo. Like, you can run, like, let's say some kind of binary and then have additional arguments that are, like, args that you're passing in. So go nuts with this, build some cool stuff with it, and we're probably going to see it again.